It is Friday, May 14th, 2021. Welcome into Dirt Tracker Daily. I'm Justin Fiedler. We've got news to talk about today from Kyle Strickler and Lucas Wolf, and we'll take a look at racing happening this weekend. So let's jump in. The idea of a silly season where drivers and teams make changes during a certain part of the year has become a bit of a misnomer, especially recently. It seems now that these types of changes can literally happen at any moment, and we've already seen that occur multiple times this season. Go back to April 20th when we saw Brent Marks depart CJB and Daryl Lanigan split with Viper. Or how about May 5th when Kerry Madsen left the Barshinger ride in Pennsylvania? We aren't even into the summer yet, and we've already had some pretty high-profile changes, and we saw even more yesterday in both the late model and sprint car world. First, after an incredibly up-and-down start to 2021, Kyle Strickler and PCC Motorsports have parted ways. Team owner Craig Sims retrieved his equipment from Strickler's North Carolina shop this week and has brought everything back to Indiana. The team's original plan was to run the full Lucas Oil Late Model Dirt Series schedule this season, but that changed after a rough speed weeks in Florida left Strickler way down the standings. Strickler, who is still very new to dirt late model racing, was attempting to get comfortable in rocket chassis, uh, but the transition didn't go well and the team switched back to the Longhorns that Strickler was more comfortable with. That move paid dividends with the team taking two wins at Volusia with the Outlaws and leaving Florida with the Outlaw points lead. Since then, though, things have gone sideways. Strickler went 10 straight races, finishing 12th or worse with the Outlaws from Smoky Mountain to Boone. Crew chief Vinny Giuliani departed the team, and now the short-lived pairing is over. Strickler did pick up a 7th and a 4th at Mississippi Thunder last weekend, but that wasn't enough to save the deal. Sims told Dirt on Dirt's Kevin Kovac that he will start working towards getting the team prepared to run the full 2022 schedule with a new driver, and that he's already had interest from some drivers to run some special event races later in the season. As for Strickler, he is now without a team and a car and is looking to put something together to run the Outlaws next races at Port Royal on May 21st and 22nd. He told Kovac he will also, quote, definitely be at Eldora for the Double Dreams in June. With as badly as the last few months have gone for Strickler, this move definitely doesn't surprise me. He's a talented driver who can obviously compete at the highest levels, but things just haven't gone his way in 2021. These owners expect results and regularly, and many won't hesitate to make a quick move if they feel it's necessary. We live very much in a what-have-you-done-for-me-lately time where past success doesn't guarantee future employment. This does feel like a speed bump for Strickler's career, though. It's been rough as of late, but I think he'll be a fixture in dirt light model competition for years to come. A Lucas win, multiple outlaw wins, and plenty of good results in his early foray into this type of racing bode well for his future. We'll keep you posted as we know more about what's next for him and PCC Motorsports. In the sprint car ranks, the return of Lucas Wolf to a national touring sprint car series is over almost as quickly as it started. Found out yesterday that he and team owner Mark Cauldron have split following just seven All-Star Circuit of Champions races. Wolf currently sits 11th in the All-Star points and had yet to crack the top 10 in a race this season. His best finish was 11th in that blown tire fiasco at Virginia Motor Speedway. In the series' previous two races, Wolf didn't transfer from the B main at Sharon and was 21st at Tri City. Wolf becomes the second driver to fall off the All Star Tour with the recent departure of Brent Marks. The Marks deal, though, was a net zero move as Paul McMahon will run in Marks' place the rest of the season. Again, not a surprising move here. Wolf was struggling in the 07, and when you aren't at least finishing top 10, there are definitely issues within that team. We don't know who will fill the seat of the 07 going forward, and we don't know for sure what's next for Wolf. I'd imagine, though, we'll see Lucas more often back in Pennsylvania, as was his original plan for 2021 with the Alibox and the 5W machine. The All-Star field is stacked with talent this season, and it was very possible from the start that we would see a few teams and drivers get squeezed out. If you have thoughts about either of these moves, drop them in the comments below or on social media. Are you surprised by either? Let me know what you think. Speaking of the All-Stars, they are in action for two shows, Friday at I-96 in Michigan and Saturday at the Dirt Oval at Route 66 in Illinois. Justin Peck has been the talk of the series so far in 2020, uh, 2021 with two wins, but Ian Madsen enters the weekend as the points leader. He has yet to get a victory, but he's been very consistent in the uh, McGee ride with five straight top 10 finishes, including a pair of thirds last time out at Sharon and Tri-City. 
Peck, Tyler Courtney, Zeb Wise, and Corey Eliason round out the top five in the standings. Eliason is the most recent winner at I-96 back in 2019, and Aaron Reitzel won the series last trip to Route 66 also in 2019. The DirtTracker.com analytics prediction formula likes Madsen tonight at I-96 because of his recent consistency and his good runs on 3 ace mile tracks. Elias and N. Peck trail him in win chances. A little surprisingly, Madsen is also the favorite Saturday at Route 66. He's trailed by Elias and N. Paul McMahon. Remember here that the predictions are based strictly on the stats. My opinion is not a part of these predictions. I just tell the code I wrote what series and what track, and it spits out the predictions. If you can't be at the track this weekend, watch the All-Stars live on Flow Racing. In Pennsylvania, the World of Outlaws clash with the Posse continues tonight and tomorrow at Williams Grove for the Morgan Cup weekend. Brad Sweet won Wednesday night at Lincoln, and he continues to lead the standings over David Gravel and Carson Macedo. The Outlaws had four races at the Grove last season, with Shane Stewart and Donnie Schatz getting a win each and David Gravel winning twice. With all that's been happening lately, it could be a wild couple of nights. We talked earlier in the week about Sweet's past struggles in Central PA, but that was put to rest a little bit on Wednesday at Lincoln. Shots is still looking for win 300. David Gravel will definitely be fast both nights. Brent Marks is certainly on the rise, and Kyle Larson will be in the field in Paul Silva's 57. There's a lot to watch for tonight and tomorrow. With Larson in attendance and his past success at the Grove, he's actually the favorite for the two nights from the prediction formula. He's got a fairly sizable advantage over David Gravel and Donnie Schatz. Lance DeWeese is the posse driver with the highest win chances, but he's quite a ways down the order. The last time a posse driver won an outlaw show at Williams Grove was DeWeese in May of 2019. If being at the Grove isn't in the cards this weekend, Dirt Vision has live coverage. Another sprint car action this weekend, the NARC King of the West Series is back on Saturday at Thunder Bowl Raceway for round number two of the year. DJ Neto won the season opener at Stockton and is the current series points leader. And the IRA joined the All-Stars Saturday at Route 66 for their fourth race of 2021. Bill Baylog, Carson Short, and Brooke Tatnell won the first three races, while Scotty Thiel currently leads the points over Jake Blackhurst and Scotty Neitzel. There's also ASCS action at Volunteer Speedway. The Sprint Car Challenge Tour is at Colorado Speedway. The War Sprint Cars are at Central Missouri, and there's plenty of other local and regional action. To see a full calendar of open wheel action for the weekend, visit tjslideways.com. If you're looking for late model racing this weekend, Mars has two big money shows tonight at Farmer City for $10,000 to win and Saturday at Fairbury for $15,000 to win. The Ultimate Southeast Late Models are at Virginia Motor Speedway on Saturday for 20000 to win. I know Jimmy Owens and his team are headed there. The Southern All-Stars are at Richmond, and there's plenty of other local and regional action at places like Tri-City, Moeller, Davenport, Sealands Grove, and more. To see a full late model schedule, visit DirtOnDirt.com. Don't forget also the USMTS Modifieds are back in action this weekend at Lakeside and Tri-State in Kansas and Oklahoma. Terry Phillips enters as the points leader over Derek Ramirez and Rodney Sanders. Both of those nights are live on Race and Dirt. Speaking of the streaming schedule, as of this recording, there are 38 shows on the streaming platforms for tonight. Dirt Track Digest, Dirt Vision, Flow Racing, Race and Boys, Race and Dirt, Speed Sport, and The Cushion all have shows. Uh, the World of Outlaws, All-Stars, Mars, uh, IMCA, ASCS, USMTS, Sprint Car Challenge Tour, and a lot more are represented across the board. To see the full daily streaming schedule with links to watch, visit dirttracker.com slash watch tonight. That's it for the show today. Hope everybody has a good Friday and a good weekend. If you have thoughts about the topics on today's show, please leave them in the comments below or tweet at me. You can find Dirt Tracker daily where you get podcasts plus YouTube and Facebook. If you like what I'm doing, please subscribe and leave a review. Follow Dirt Tracker on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok at Dirt Tracker. And you can check out the website for all kinds of cool dirt racing stuff by visiting dirttracker.com. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. We'll see you on Monday for more Dirt Tracker Daily. 